In this video, we're going to improve our naive caching solution to something that is a little bit more maintainable in our code base. And we're going to do that with the decorator pattern. Now I'm just going to cover this really quick. Decorator pattern, also known as a wrapper, is a design pattern that allows behavior to be added to an individual object without affecting the behavior of other objects. In other words, we can wrap some functionality around an object with a clever use of interfaces. So I'll just show you this graph here. We have an interface, which is this top block here. Then we have a concrete component, which I'll call the core object. It's the page views repository in our case. And then we have a decorator that implements the same interface. So it has the same methods available. And that decorator wraps around the concrete component so that it can add functionality to it. In our case, that functionality will be a layer of caching. So what this lets us do is have a base class, our core object that still has the exact same functionality and doesn't change at all. And then we have a cache class that caches stuff without affecting or changing the core component. This is basically what Laravel middleware is like as well, where a request object can go through different layers of middleware where each middleware component can do something to that request and pass it on to the next component and the next component, either returning a request class early before it gets to the base component or just affecting it and tweaking it until it finally gets to the base request object. Laravel's middleware is slightly different in implementation detail, but really it's the same concept where it's wrapping functionality around the request object. So back to our application here, I've reverted our changes with our naive caching solution so we can see we're back to using database queries, there's no caching in place. Let's head back to the code and see what we need to tweak and change to use a decorator pattern to add caching. So I'll go to app and I'm first gonna head to our controller, to the home controller. And we see we're back to our original code where we just get a new instance of page views repository, pass it the currently logged in user and off we go and use it that. The first thing I wanna do is create a new namespace cause we're gonna make a bunch of classes here to complete this. So inside of app here, I'm just going to make a new directory for our namespace. I'm going to call it analytics. So we have a namespace for our new classes. I'm going to move page views up into that namespace. So that'll require a few changes here. First and foremost, we're going to do app analytics page views, since that's now in our new namespace. I have to spell that right, of course. And in here, we have to tell it that the namespace is now app analytics. And that resolves, I can command click through to it. All right, so that's in our namespace analytics. Now down here, we use a page view object that's not in the same namespace. So I'll do use app page view. And additionally, we also have a user object here. And we know that is also in the app namespace. So we'll do use app user as well. And I think that takes care of all the dependencies here. So let's head on over here, we'll refresh and we'll see that this works. We don't get any errors. All right, so we have moved page views into its own namespace. Let's next create an interface that a page views repository and any decorating classes are going to implement. So in the analytics namespace in that folder, we're gonna do a new PHP class. We're gonna make it an interface. It's already in the app analytics namespace. We're just gonna name this views, plural. So the interface will be named views and the two methods it needs to define are the things in the page views repository and that is days back and domain. So let's just see, I'll just copy and paste this, pop it in here. And then I'll copy and paste the domains method, do the same thing. And I'll just add some comments here. Let PHP storm autofill those and we have an interface. So back to our page views repository object. And we'll say that the page views repository object will implement the views object, which is in the same namespace. So we don't need a use statement here. And we're not getting any red lines in PHP storm. So it looks like it's successfully implementing this. So back here, we'll refresh. That's still working, great. And now that we have this contract, this interface, we can start using a service provider to help us automatically build the page views object using Laravel's container. And this is gonna help simplify some stuff. So instead of having to new up this method here, and when we have the decorator, wrapping the base core object, the page views object here in that decorator, we can have Laravel build that for us automatically. So I'm gonna to go to providers here. I'm just gonna use the app service provider that already exists, but you can create your own service provider specific to the analytics package or whatever you want. But I'm just gonna use this one cause it's already here and this is just a simple change. I'm gonna register a singleton on the app object. And we know it has an abstract and to resolve the abstract, we're gonna pass it a closure and the closure is gonna tell Laravel 
what to resolve for the abstract. Now the abstract is gonna be that page view interface here. So we're gonna do use app analytics views, the interface. And we're gonna say whenever the views class is called upon within Laravel, then resolve a new something. And that new something in this case is just gonna be a new app analytics page views object. And of course I'll just use that so we can simplify it up here. So use app analytics page views that in order. And we know the page views object needs an instance of the currently logged in user. So we have a singleton here. It's going to be the same class that gets returned every time if it gets called multiple times within a page request. Anytime we ask for the interface, we're going to resolve it by creating a new page views object and passing it the currently logged in user. So now over here in our controller, we can make a few changes to get that to work. We're going to use app analytics views the interface and I'll just put that in order here by length and then over here I'm going to type in the views object and we're going to call it page views which I believe is what we called that down here yep yeah that all matches so that's going to let us get rid of this where we knew it up within the method we're going to let Laravel use this type hint to resolve that dependency for us okay let's see if anything broke nope still looking good okay so Laravel is using the container. It's automatically resolving the dependency page views because it knows when it sees the interface here, our views interface, to create a new page views object because we have to find that in this application uh, service provider here in the register method. All right, so we are almost there. We have the base that we need. We have an interface. We have the page views object and it's still working, of course. What we need to do now is add a layer of caching. And so instead of just adding caching directly in the page views repository, we can create a decorator class that adds the caching behavior on top of it without having to change this class at all. So I'm gonna make a new class here. We're gonna do a new PHP class. It's in the app analytics namespace still. I'm gonna call it page views cache. Okay, so we know this needs to implement the views interface and I'll just have PHP Storm stub that out for us. All right, so days back and domains. I'm not gonna add any caching functionality to this just yet. Instead, I'm just gonna have it pass through to the page views object. And a way to do that is to add or pass in the page views object, the concrete object here, into the page views cache when we create it. So we'll do public function construct, we'll create the constructor. Inside of the constructor, we're gonna say pass something that's implementing the views interface, and we're gonna call it next. And the reason we call it next is because it's usually the thing we call on next, the next object in line inside of this object. Um, so we have PHP Storm auto generate the boilerplate for us. And now that we have this next object, we're just gonna say here, return the result of next. Return this next. Now next, it already knows it has two methods, right? Because it's implementing the views interface and those are the two methods defined on that views interface. So it knows that the next object will always have days back and domains. So say days back, pass it the days, pass it the domain, pass it the customer. And down here we can do the exact same thing. Return this next domains and there's no parameters for that. So the page views cast object is not actually doing anything, right? It's just taking the next object and it is returning whatever that next object gives us for days back or domains. So this is purely a pass through object. It's not doing anything useful for us right now, but I just want to show you that it works. So obviously we haven't done anything with page views cache yet. So let's head back to our app service provider. And instead of returning a new page views object directly, we're going to do return new page views cache object. And this takes an instance of next and instead of next there, we're going to pass out a new page views object. And we can get rid of this line. Great. So we're creating this new page views cache object. When we're creating it, we pass it a new instance of page views. And of course we pass that the current user because this page views repository object needs that. So what we know is that anytime the views interface is gonna be called for, whenever it needs to get resolved out of the container, Laravel is gonna return a new page views cache object, which itself contains a page views object. Now, because page views cache is just passing on through to next, it's gonna pass on through to this page views object and just return the results of the methods on this. So let's see that in action. I should be able to refresh this and see that it just works. It continues to pass us back the results of those queries. Now, of course, we haven't added any caching, but to do that, it's as simple as adding cache behavior to this page views cache object. So instead of returning this next days back or this next domains, we can add caching here. So to do that, I'm gonna reuse that cache remember function. 
This is exactly what we saw before, uh, undefined class cache. That's a good point. Let's go to use cache. And we're going to need to do the exact same things that we did before. First and foremost, instead of doing the database query directly in here, we can just return the results of this next days back, which returns the results of those queries. And this is kind of the beauty of the decorator pattern, right? Because this is going to do the cache remember functionality. It's going to cache in this class. If it doesn't have the item in cache, it's going to get that item and save it and return it. And to do that, we just call this next days back on the next object. And the next object in our case is going to be that base page views object. So we don't need to know anything about how the next class the page views object works in this class, right? This is only responsible for caching. It doesn't care about how it gets the data or what that data is. It's just going to cache it. Okay, now we're in a closure here. So I need that use statement for days, domain, and customer. And that allows us to pass those variables back to the days back method here. And we know we need to build a cache key and set the minutes. Now minutes were 60 minutes like we set in the last video. I'll keep that. And here I'm just going to copy and paste the cache key logic that we created and used before. Okay, so cache key, md5 vsprint f of the current user ID, the days domain, and the customer variables. So I'll set that as the cache key. And now I should be able to refresh this and see that it will use the cache after our first request. All right, great. So we saw one query disappear here. That is now getting pulled from cache. Perfect. We'll do the same thing down here for the domains method. And I'll just copy and paste this in. So exactly like before, we're building a cache key, an MD5 with vsprint f of the current user ID and just the word domains. We're passing that cache key here, setting it for 60 minutes. If that item expired, it's no longer in cache or it's just never put in cache yet, it'll get that object by calling this next domains, which of course calls the page views object domains method. So I should be able to refresh this. And of course, we get that one more time. But after another refresh, we see that it's gone. So now we have two queries left. And the larger, longer queries are no longer being run on page load. They're getting pulled from cache instead. Perfect. All right, and that's really it for the decorator pattern. It's not too hard to grasp. It is a little bit of tricky, because we are doing a tricky thing with the constructor here in the decorator where we pass in this next object. And that next object could be anything implementing views. And in our case, we just have one uh, layer to this decorator, right? We just have the page views cache and the base object. But you can see if we had other layers here, we could add them here, right? We could do, for example, new some other decorator, and that decorator itself could take a new page views object. In that case, we have three layers here instead of just two. And you can just keep doing that on and on and on for as many intermediary decorators as you need or want. And each one could add some behavior or take away some behavior or do some kind of modification as much as it needs to. And this will always work because each of these need to implement that views interface. And we know they will always have the days back and domains methods allowing us to layer all of this just like so. With the end result, that home controller can always call page views days back and page views domains without ever worrying about the interface, the methods being unavailable or are changing. All right, so let's go back to App Service Provider, get rid of those changes. Great, let's just refresh this, make sure it's still working. All right, great. In the next video, we'll wrap up talking about object caching with a discussion about how much data we're saving to our cache, to Redis in this case, and how to reduce that memory usage.